Today we're doing some modifications to the rail bike. If you've watched version four, you'll probably know what I'm gonna do. We're building version number five. In case you're wondering who this lady is, it's my mom. And she's gonna help me test the rail bike today because Josh and Sean abandoned me. All right, first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna change these two wheels to be double stacked on each side. And, oh, and you're saying why? I was watching some videos and it looks like everyone's using a wider wheel. I think it'll just give me a little bit more grace or compliance in case it moves around a little bit. So we're gonna put two wheels thick on each side on that. And then on this here, we had very good success with it. It was really good, but it needs more adjustments. So what I've done is I've basically redesigned it to still have the three wheels in these positions, but each wheel is adjustable up and down, left and right, that's it, up and down, left and right. In this thing, in this uh, orientation, this is only movable up and down. These are only movable on the 65 degree angle and then the entire unit is there. So I need a little bit more independent um, movement. And lastly, if you saw the last video, we're gonna get rid of the rear section of the front guide. And then my mom is gonna ride the bike actually. I don't know how that's gonna go. Okay, that actually took longer than I thought, but there you have it. So now this wheel here can go back and forth. This wheel here can go up and down or back and forth. And this wheel here can go up and down, back and forth. And then these slots here are how we will adjust the height of that. And when we get to the track, we'll make sure that is nice and snug and we'll get going. Next, we gotta do the outrigger. So this should give me like a little bit of, you know, tolerance. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see if it makes a difference. We are back at the undisclosed location of the abandoned rail line. Actually, it's no secret where it is, just in Burlington off the walking path. Uh, got all the gear myself, or I'm carrying all the gear myself. I've got my mom with me, which is kind of weird, but she wants to be in the video. She loves YouTube. <laughs> Anyway, here's all the stuff. You know the, uh, the drill by now. We're gonna set it all up over here and give it a go. My mom's gonna try and use the GoPro, which I anticipate being a technical challenge for. Okay, we're all set up. Let's go over a couple of the rules for today. So this here now has the four wheels and I'm thinking like a little bit more forgiveness. We might have to wait this, but I'll do that later. Second part is the fully adjustable front. So here we go. So what we've done differently here is that I have made this very loose, very loose. I wanna see how that feels as opposed to, I, I'd mentioned in a comment to someone, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, I'd have to look it up. But basically the way that it feels like when you're riding this is like you're riding the bike but someone else is steering. So it's very hard to correct like steering through leaning things. Um, I'm hoping that this is gonna solve that, allow me to not leave the rail, but still be able to balance on it. I don't know. If not, we'll tighten it up and we'll bring them down. But this is what we're gonna do for the first try. Is it going? Yep. Oh. All right, rail bike version, just hold steady. Rail bike version five, uh, maiden voyage. Got all the stuff in my pockets. We're just gonna go slow, because we've got the extra loose extra loose front wheel guide. Oh, that feels crazy. <laughs> don't fall. I don't want to have 
could strap you to the rail bike and take you to the hospital. <laughs> okay, initial impressions are that the wheel guide is much too loose. It's actually crazy. Way worse than if it's tight for sure. So we're gonna tighten it back up, see if we can't keep the bike from going so squirrely uh, on the back end. Give it another go. But uh, confidence wise, you know, it's quite good because this, the ends or the side pieces are very far down. These are very far down. We just need to move them in a bit. We can't have that much play. Maybe half of that. Tightened it up a little bit, but not super tight. We're gonna see how that goes. Helen Evans, lead technical <laughs> photographer. Voyage number two. It's getting harder and harder to get my foot over this <laughs> as I get older. Well, I gotta like gear down, I think. Yeah, what happened? Uh, I think I gotta tighten it up a little yeah, bit Yeah, I think you do. So, just I'm so gonna... everyone's aware, the problem, I believe, is that because I now, it's all adjustable, so we can fix it for sure. But the problem is that because I'm allowing the front wheel to turn so much, it's actually yeah. driving these up over the edge. So I need to tighten them up a little bit or, or push them down further. There's probably a balance somewhere. But certainly an upgrade, certainly an upgrade. Okay, so much tighter now, you can see. I think what happened was that it actually ended up climbing up. See the, it, it, I'm not saying that it will happen, but like the grip, the grip is, it almost climbed up. Now, the angle that I have these wheels on is based on the, uh, I think it's called the Don Hugh rail bike or something like that. It's the guy, it's that guy that sent me the plans. I think his name is Jack actually. Anyway, I based that angle on there, but I'm now thinking that maybe I need it like a steeper angle or a flatter angle so it doesn't climb up the side of the rail. But I can kind of adjust that anyway, just because I only have one bolt, so I can move that out and, and put it in a little bit more. So let's go for, uh, let's go for ride number three. You ready? Okay, so the issue is clearly here. This is so deep that we lodged it in there. So not that that's a problem. I don't anticipate ever needing to go like through these things in the section that I'm going to, but it's good to know. So we'll skip this part and head back on over there. <laughs> I'm the I'm the photographer. <laughs> RB5, uh, what are we doing? Number Voyage number four. Okay. So I think that uh, nice. I think that's pretty much good. Okay, well we're gonna start doing some higher speed runs because I'm pretty sure we figured it out. So there is, there is a benefit to the uh, weighted outrigger for sure. And there was a guy actually, I think it was on rail bike version two, told me to do it. I didn't, I didn't give him a shout out, but it was on my mind after he said it. And uh, the ones I have seen, usually they put their gear on there. So that's something that we can consider when we're actually on our trip. But here we are here now, you know, 
the railway has bags and garbage of all kind. I don't know if you can actually see it. It's, it's pretty bad here, actually. Um, I think a lot of kids party here or something. Anyway, we're going to give this one a go now. We have some bad news. We have some very bad news. We suffered a part loss. The bolt has fallen off oh, oh. on the end of the wheel. Um, these ones seem pretty good, but I do have an idea. I have an idea. It's one of the benefits of using the same nuts. Sorry, sorry I called it a bolt. Using the same nuts on the entire system is we can pull this one off there and go with just a single single double wheel on this side um, so i think i'm going to do that that'll let us test if this is even required anymore because the ones that i see online they only have one wheel out here they have one wheel that's it so let's go i think we've done it i think we've done it i'm not sure if we need the anti-torque i wheel. was going to say now that that would be my guess because it went so well the more parts, the more problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's my engineering. No, I agree. You, guys, you don't know that Helen Evans is actually, she's an engineer, she's basically an engineer. She's a teacher, <laughs> she's a retired teacher, taught elementary grades, so she's an engineer. Anyway, but I agree with you. Yeah. More, more parts, more problems. Yeah, yeah. Who wants more parts, not me. Exactly. Keep it simple, kiss. <laughs> no, you're gonna hurt yourself. Okay, there's a guy. Oh my God. There's a guy. <laughs> I also can't remember his name, but I can never remember the name, but I always appreciate the comments. I, I actually, oh, what's his name again? Who? Not, I can't remember his name. Anyway, you know who you are. You want to get rid of the outrigger. Now, yeah, I don't know if you've ridden this rail bike before. It's very, very difficult to stay balanced. Ooh, police. Um, but I'm open to it, man. And if I can get rid of the outrigger, let's get rid of it. But no because you don't have the balance then scientifically not sound <laughs> my mom is worried about me i think we can take it off and just see i honestly yep. don't think it's physically possible at all to even get going um but yeah let's give it a go okay so this is what it looks like it's like i'm not even sure how you're going to get started on this but uh you gonna film me also, as a reminder, I need to bring like a toolbox. My pockets are filled with tools and spare parts. And it's very uncomfortable. Am I in there? Give <laughs> <laughs> There you go, honey. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I actually think that you can balance, but oh my god! I think the problem is you, you would actually need to get rid of the guide. The guide is the problem because the guide is steering the wheel for you. Yeah. If so you you'd have to. The, oh, you can't turn the wheel the appropriate way to balance. 
That's what uh, my guess is right now. There's just no way. <laughs> My assessment, my assessment of the no outrigger is that you actually have to get rid of the front guide as yep. well. So when you go to, what happens is like you're riding it and then as the guide forces the wheel this way, you don't have time to balance. So, buddy, you're welcome to do it yourself, but the outrigger is going back on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if I'm going to put what I just did in the video. I'm actually not sure. I tried to ride it without the outrigger. <laughs> and I'll see. I might put a few clips in there, but it was kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Okay, let's go over a couple things. Because we have to have some improvements. This is still in prototype form. We're going to build the whole thing out of carbon fiber and titanium once we get it like kind of nailed down. So, step number one. Uh, I'm not sure if I need two wheels stacked or even the four wheels or, or, the, or the, the, the anti torque device. I don't know, but that's an easy attachment to make so I can play with that later. Second thing is, is this has now lasted a significant amount of runs. I don't know if I told you, I replaced the bolt there with like a grade, oh geez, can't remember, but it's 175,000 PSI yield strength. Um, the bolt that broke before was an 18.8 stainless steel, which has like, I think a yield strength of like 35,000. So that bolt is five times stronger. Um, I'm convinced I can build a better joint anyway. Now then, when it comes to the front, um, I'm rethinking these slots because this is falling down. So I think that this is gonna have to be either different holes for various... Different holes. For the, for the various uh, sizes of tire. I think that's better than the slot. Um, because that's going to be a, a problem as this thing as this comes down these wheels tilt up and I think that leads to them climbing out <sighs> okay and then for the guide itself uh, I am convinced that we don't need the rear section of the guide I mean today was by far probably the most successful that we had now this is really still in prototype form I mean you can see it's like kind of crooked a little bit and stuff like that I'll probably get rid of this stuff but I have noticed today that the fine adjustment is lacking in these slots. So I'm not sure what that means if I put some screws on each side of this thing maybe to, to move it around, but I would like to have some, some precision adjustment for all the different types of rails. Um, you know, moving them manually in slots, hmm, it's not the best. But um, that's RB5, stay tuned for RB6. And the reason why I'm doing some of these videos is because my trip is coming up, I wanna do it in the spring. So I've only got about another, was it April? You know, I want to do it May-ish, April, late, late April, May-ish. So I've only got a couple more weeks and then you're going to see where this thing's going to be used. Thanks for watching.